Hello everyone and welcome to another video on building serverless applications on AWS with .NET and AWS Lambda. In this video, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to move an existing ASP.NET application and run it on AWS Lambda. In fact, we're going to do it in less than 10 minutes without changing a single line of existing application code. Let's get straight to it. So what we've got here is the out of the box template for a new ASP.NET Web API. And that's what we're gonna use as our example. So all we've got is the weather forecast controller that's just going to give us a list of current weather forecasts. We've got our program CS file, as we would normally, that sets up our web host. And then we've got the startup.cs file where all of the dependency injection and all that kind of configuration is gonna happen. So how do we then run this on Lambda? Well, the first thing you need to do is to add a NuGet package. And in this case, I'm going to add the Amazon dot, uh, when my IDE decides to wake up, there we are, Amazon dot Lambda dot ASP net course server, NuGet package. So when that eventually loads, we've got the Amazon Lambda ASP net core server. There we go took a time. My internets are not going so well today. So now once we've added this ASP net course server package, this gives us some handy utilities and useful um, base classes and things like that, that will allow us to do, um, to run this on Lambda. Now that we've got this package added, we can now go off and configure the code we need to run this on Lambda. And remember, we're not going to change a single line of existing application code. Instead, what I'm going to do is add a completely new class to my project. And I'm going to call that a Lambda entry point. The name of this is irrelevant. Um, it does normally make sense to use something that is memorable or obvious. And that Lambda entry point class is going to inherit from the Amazon Lambda ASP Net Core Server package. And it's going to need to inherit from a different base class based on what we're using in front of Lambda whether that be an application load balancer or a API gateway REST API or a HTTP API, the, the base class will differ based on which you are using. In this case, we're gonna use a HTTP API. So we inherit from the really easy to say API gateway HTTP API V2 proxy function. Yes, that one is a bit of a mouthful. So we can add the references for that now. And now we've got this class that is ready to configure. And then all we need to do is override the um, init class that takes the iWeb host builder. And then what we can say here is builder.use startup. And we can actually pass in our startup class. That is all the code we need to add for this to run on Lambda. So now let's talk about quickly what's actually happening here. So we inherit from this API gateway base class and that base class has a method on it called function handler async. Now that's the method that we're actually going to tell Lambda to invoke when a request comes in. And what that function handler async method is doing is acting as a translation layer that takes the payload in from API gateway in this case translates that to a format that ASP.NET understands, and then passes that to our actual ASP.NET application. Of course, when our application then responds, the same translation happens in reverse that takes that response from ASP.NET and translates that back to an API gateway formatted response. And that's why this base class is different based on if you're using application load balancers or REST APIs or HTTP APIs, because of course, that payload that comes back and forward is completely different. So that's all we need to change in our application code now. The benefit of doing things this way is that this API will still run on localhost. If I start this up locally, we use Kestrel and off we go, we've got an API. Then when it gets called on Lambda, we're just saying use this slightly different entry point and use that to invoke the Lambda function. So a couple of other things that we need to add, we first need to go off and update our template. We're using the AWS serverless application model to deploy this. If you want to learn more about SAM, there's a video in the description below that is the playlist I've built on using SAM with .NET. 
but uh, fundamentally the SAM, SAM template is just extensions on top of cloud formation. So we've got this AWS serverless function resource in our template, and this is where we can um, specify how this code gets compiled and deployed. So we've got the code URI is the current folder because the template's in the same folder as the application. And then we just need to update this handler. And this handler needs to point to that Lambda entry point class that we've just created. Now, if you're not familiar with the format of the handler for a .NET application, it needs to be the name of the assembly that was gonna be invoked, in this case, API on Lambda, two columns. <clears throat> And then the the class including the namespace as well. So that would be API on lambda dot lambda entry point. And let's just go and check that's right. So we've got the namespace of API on lambda, the class of lambda entry point. Excellent. And then it needs to be the method that we want to invoke. In this case, function handler async. And remember that function handler async method comes from that base class. And the final thing we need to configure in here is our actual API itself. So we've configured this API here to just have a single route, this, this Lambda to be sourced by a single route, but that is a proxy route. And what API Gateway will do with this route is for every request to any path for any method, that will all get passed on to the Lambda function. So we're just offloading all of the routing and all the middleware to ASP.NET, and API Gateway is now just acting like a proxy. Let's go off and deploy that now and see that running in AWS. So I have just run a SAM build and a SAM deploy command to actually deploy this API into AWS. And you see my SAM template has output my actual API URL. So if I now hit that URL endpoint and go to my browser, you see that I get nothing back at first, but of course this endpoint is a 404. This request has got through to ASP.NET and there's nothing on the root of the API in my application. If I now update that and pass in the weather forecast endpoint, you see now I get my weather forecast data. This application is now running on AWS Lambda and we didn't have to change a single line of our existing application code. That's it, that's all there is to running an ASP.NET API on AWS Lambda. It's quick, it's easy, and it's a great way to get started with some of the benefits that you get from um, Lambda and serverless applications. In the next video, we're gonna look at how this process has been, ma been made even easier if you're using the ASP.NET minimal APIs. Because with minimal APIs, there is a single line of code that you need to add to your startup to get that API running on Lambda. But that's for next time. As always, if you've liked, if you like the video, please like, please subscribe, please share it, and I will see you next time.